Hi friends, uh, welcome back to Coffee with Ravi. Today my post is about a common problem that we see in life, which is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or COPD. COPD is a condition where the disease is characterized by decreased air and therefore decreased oxygen getting into our system. Approximately 5% of our population has it and it's the fourth leading cause of death. The common causes of death are listed in this slide. Uh, they include heart disease, cancer, stroke, followed by COPD. So it's up there and it's as prevalent as many other common diseases in primary care, including diabetes, hypertension, obesity, etc. as this slide shows. What I wanted to give you uh, today uh, is uh, some introductory concepts of what COPD is. There are many risk factors for COPD, but the primary one is cigarette smoking. Sometimes indoor exposure to biomass fuels uh, uh, or other occupational pollution can be a risk factor. There's one condition called alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency that we'll talk about, but these are the main risk factors. To get you a broader understanding of the lung anatomy, I have this slide up here that shows the lungs and a cross-section of the lungs. When we take air in, it goes through the breathing tube or trachea into the lungs, and the lung has several units in it, which is a branching of the airways, and you can then think about a unit like a small balloon that's hanging off the edge of the smaller airways, and that's the alveolar, the spelling is A-L-V-E-O-L-A-R unit. That's where all the ex uh, air exchange uh, takes place. What happens is in COPD is this sequence of disease cycle where either because of smoking, or because of exposure to occupational or fuel, uh, you know, indoor pollution, structural changes in the lung take place. The structural changes in the lung then lead to functional changes. And here are the functional changes. What happens is that the breathing mechanism gets altered, the gas exchange gets disturbed, the, the, ability, the blood vessels in the lung start getting affected, and that causes some secondary changes on the heart. So all of these cycles then get linked. So in effect, to the human body, what happens is that the work of breathing becomes harder, the oxygenation status starts going down, as well as it starts becoming a strain on the heart. The main thing that starts happening in pulmonary emphysema is that the walls of this unit in the lung, which is what I'm calling the ACNR unit, A-C-I-N-A-R, start getting destroyed. Once the ACNR unit starts getting destroyed, what happens is that the lungs start collapsing. There's increased work of breathing. So when we breathe, when we take a breath, and I had posted this before, what happens is that the diaphragm, which is a muzzle that sits right here, is actually coming out, creating negative pressure and then the air rushes in, but the lungs have to expand. And if there's greater trouble for the lungs to expand, you're working hard to breathe, and also you're not able to expel all the carbon dioxide, which is the waste gas that's in there. As I said, the main thing that this is caused by is cigarette smoking, but there's also another cause called alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, and alpha-1 is a normal enzyme that we have in our blood. It's a housekeeping enzyme. It helps in many housekeeping functions in the lung as well as in the liver. I see that in liver disease as well. When we have problems with alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, what happens is that emphysema can develop because the housekeeping enzyme is gone and even normal housekeeping is uh, 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 not able to be done and lung disease develops. When we talk about chronic COPD, there are three subtypes within it. One is emphysema, the second one is chronic bronchitis, and the third one is chronic obstructive asthma. And we'll talk about these three subtypes briefly. This diagram gives us a sense of those three subtypes and that these subtypes can overlap. When we talk about chronic bronchitis, the definition is chronic cough, at least for three months in a row, for two consecutive years. And then we've really looked at other causes of cough, 
and there's no other cause of cough. Other causes of cough can sometimes include medications, uh, sometimes uh, it could be post-nasal drip, etc. So, but if you rule all of those out, uh, and it's developing in the context of cigarette smoking or perhaps indoor air pollution, that's chronic bronchitis. Asthma, on the other hand, is where that airway or those windpipes that we're talking about can get constricted. And lastly, emphysema is a condition where the asinar unit, uh, which is the uh, small subunit in the lung that gets disturbed. In bronchitis, this slide will show that the airway itself is inflamed, the airway becomes more constricted, there's mucus in it that's plugging it up, so the act of breathing into this pipe, because the pipe is clogged, can be hard. In emphysema, it's these changes that are happening further down in the lung in what we call the asinar unit that's getting destroyed. And this is how it looks on the chest X-ray. The lungs look like there's a lot more air in it because air is trapped. Some of the air is not coming in. This X-ray shows how it looks to a trained eye that the black that you're seeing is a lot more black than you would see with a normal uh, chest X-ray. The second photograph that I have here is a photograph of the lung. And the lung itself shows some changes where there are blebs, etc., that are happening uh, in it. Within the lung itself, in this asinar unit, there can be disease that's more towards the top of it or towards the end of that asinar unit, and that's the differentiation between distal and proximal, and that's more technical, but really what's happening is that the lung tissue is actually getting damaged uh, by, uh, by this. About 80% of the time, this is within the setting of smoking, so to diagnose COPD without smoking history is going to be hard. In a small percentage, about 20%, it can be because of indoor biomass fuels. And how to quantify smoking is pack years. The, if one is smoking a pack a day by the number of years and you multiply that, that's the number of pack years. Typically, it takes in the range of 10 to 15 years to develop COPD, but you start seeing lung changes that are short of COPD even earlier when you're smoking. So really, the bottom line is, we all need to uh, uh, encourage ourselves, if you're smoking, our, our family members or friends to avoid smoking. The cardinal or the main symptom can be difficulty breathing, cough is a big thing, sometimes wheezing, fatigue, and then secondary changes can take place. As we talked about the effect on the heart, you can get leg swelling, heart failure, weight loss, weight gain if you're, not, uh, uh, if you're accumulating fluid, all of these start playing together. Sometimes physical exam can give us clues as to what's going on. Sometimes you need more sophisticated testing called pulmonary function tests, chest x-rays, or perhaps sometimes CAT scans. These are therefore sort of a big summary of what chronic obstructive pulmonary disease is or COPD. In summary, it can be either bronchitis, which can be of the airway inflammation causing mucus, cough, that sort of a thing or it can be more distal where the asinar unit or the subunit of the lung is actually involved and destroyed. There can be an overlap with asthma, so it needs to be carefully uh, uh, thought about. And as to the treatment, we'll talk about it in later posts, but the big take home is smoking cessation, I think can be hugely helpful, not just by helping uh, uh, slow down the progression, but it can take away the irritation, what changes we are, that are already there, we can deal with. And in my subsequent posts, we'll talk about how to uh, stop smoking, what are strategies uh, that one can do, what are medical strategies that a medical professional can help with. I want to kind of dig into that a bit more in future posts. So if you like this, please share this with your friends and family. And if you have questions, please put it in the response field, and I'm glad to uh, get back to you about that. Thank you again.